It's like a daily, it's like the sun coming up, having an analyst either trim their target or in this case, uh, iPhone unit forecast for, for 19. 20% in Q1, is that too severe? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's obviously too early to say and, and the focus has been on the, on the 10R, I think as far as the sales, but look, we're four years after <laughs> the iPhone 6 launch. Upgrade rates are an all time low. We're talking now about what's happening in 2019. I think there's some evidence already in some of the developed markets that some of the upgrade rates are bottoming out, meaning that, that the replacement cycle maybe is, is, has lengthened as far as it's going to be. And, and a lot of those people out there with iPhone 6s need to upgrade. Now, China, separate issue, right? 15 to 20 percent of sales, other dynamics going on there in terms of you know, some of the court cases, the economy, things like that. So certainly that can have an impact, but 20 percent is a pretty, pretty aggressive cut. Um, and implies a massive sequential decline from the December quarter that we haven't really seen in past years. Tom, there's a lot of headline risks circling Apple right now, but are the fears in general by investors overdone, especially when you see shares have dropped, what, more than 20% recently? I think, sure, I think it's uh, way overdone. So if you look at, for example, the adjustments we made for the December quarter, uh, basically taking units down and uh, lowering our number on a sales front to the low end of management's guidance, you're looking at about a 3% change in our price target on lower discounted cash flow uh, as we're using discounted cash flow to value the company. And as you pointed out, the shares have declined 20%. So we think that correction's way overdone and has created a buying opportunity, uh, even with lower expectations for units for iPhones. Well, is the, is the story here about unit growth or is it about services slowing? Is it about some kind of uh, legal exposure in the Supreme Court down the road? And we've got people have been throwing all kinds of smoke bombs. I mean, ever since the company reported, the story is all over the place. It's all those things that you mentioned. It's supply chain, it's China, it's, is it services, is it units? They're not reporting the units. I mean, so we're all over the, all over the map in terms of the concerns about Apple and, and, and you know, as, as the prior uh, person mentioned, numbers have come way down. I mean, whether it's this quarter or in 2019, there's been massive cuts by the, by the analysts. The stock has given up $250 billion of market cap. And one thing that no one's been talking about since they reported is the share repurchase activity. And frankly, at the current stock price, if they were targeting this net cash neutral target that they talked about in prior quarters, the company's yep. going to retire 20% of the stock if the stock doesn't rally from here. So if investors aren't going to buy the stock, then the company is just going to sit there and take in the share count, which is going to lift the earnings growth. Yeah, share buybacks. Also just the fact that it's sitting on this massive pile of cash in general. Uh, Tom, in, in terms of your investment thesis on Apple, what do you see as the biggest potential risk? Well, I think the biggest potential risk has definitely been China. When you think about 20% of their sales go to Chinese consumers, and while we're starting to see signs of thawing on the U.S.-China trade war, uh, the prospect of not forging a final deal, uh, seeing an escalation in tariffs, 25% from 10%. So I definitely feel like the big risk for Apple today still is China. But I agree with the assertion that buying back shares uh, and still generating very significant free cash flow could have the stock in a better position than the company may be in on at least a short-term basis. Hey, Walt, finally, uh, more broadly, uh, a lot of discussion this week and even today in the Washington Post is an op-ed by our former colleague about 5G and how it relates to the ongoing uh, trade war with China. Are clients asking about how that may or may not, how the rollout and the disruption that we expect from 5G could be disrupted by, obviously, these strained relations? I mean, it, it comes up, but really... Our goal is, as, uh, as far as what the regulators and the companies have talked about, is to be ahead of what the Chinese are doing, whether it's from the vendors or the operators. It's still early, but clients are very interested in, in picking winners and losers and figuring out the timeline on this. And, and maybe 2019, you're not going to see a lot of the flow through in terms of revenue and earnings for companies like Apple or Ericsson and Nokia. But you're positioning now to see who those winners and losers are. And again, the decision that regulators make, even on things like a Sprint T-Mobile transaction or, or, or Spectrum auctions that the government should or shouldn't do, are things that come into play when you think about trying to be ahead of everyone else in terms of 5G.